أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قاف والقرآن المجيد بل عجبوا أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون هذا شيء عجيب أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدٌ قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ مَرِيجٍ so last time we talked about that the first, that the main theme of Surah Qaf is the evidence of the day of resurrection. But the Surah will tackle that main theme with different angles. The first angle is the absolute knowledge of Allah Taala. That you said and you wonder that you will come back to life. Allah Taala Almighty knows everything. When you are in your graves, you know every single thing that the earth will swallow from you. Then he go to the different angle, which is open the book of the universe, which is one of the main themes in Quran, which look at the sky above you, look at the earth, look at the mountains, the one who created all of this. It's easy for him then to bring you life again after death. Then we stop here. أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجٍ That's about sky, how we build it, how we decorate it, we make it with no flaws. Then he go to the earth. وَالْأَرْضَ مَدَدْنَاهَا وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيجٍ We stop here. Last time we said that. Allah Taala when He talk about this, about the universe, this the book, a very important book to read. We have two books, book from Revelation and book of the universe. And when you read the book of universe, you will straight away tell you that there is a creator. And the ayat surat qaf, when Allah talk about the universe, he emphasized something, the beauty of this universe. When he talk about the earth and how he spread the earth and put the firm mountains and then a lot of crops and grain come, he said, min kulli zawjin bahij. It means joyous. It means something beautiful. He said, look at the banana before you eat it. Look how it in the tree. How Allah makes it very beautiful. Look at the ananas when you... Everything is beautiful, but we just need to open our eyes. One of the main themes of Quran, just he said, open your eyes and see around you. Everything is perfect and beautiful. That's why he said after the sky and the earth, رِزْقًا لِلْعِبَادِ When we say, in كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيجٍ تَبْصِرَةً وَذِكْرًا لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ مُنِيبٍ He said, we created all of this for two purposes. تَبْصِرَة and ذِكْرًا تَبْصِرة is lesson. To derive lessons from this. Dhikra is a reminder. Tabsira come from basira. We have in Arabic basar and basira. Basar is the sight when you look at something physical. Basira is insight when you look by your spiritual eye. So there's basar and basira. He said this is lessons for those people who have basira which they look at by basar, and behind that they reflect to see by their basira. And then he said, reminder also, dhikra. But dhikra not for everyone. 
لكل عبد منيب only for the servants who try to return to their Lord only for those who humble themselves and know they are servants to Almighty and when he finished this picture sky, earth, lessons and reminder then he talked about what if the, something comes from the sky to the earth which is the rain because he want to tackle now the question of resurrection in a beautiful way he said now when you finish now look at the sky look at the earth separately now وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً مُبَارَكًا And we descend from the sky a blessed water. There is a lot of parable in Quran between water from the sky and between the revelation from the heavens. Allah described water as mubarak, blessed. Allah described Quran as mubarak. Water come to the earth and the earth before was dead. And when the water came down, Allah bring earth to life again. And also when the revelation descend to the hearts of a human being, they were dead and they become alive because of revelation. So it's Ma Mubarak. Then he said what he did with this blessed water. We bring the dead land to life again by that blessed water. And then he said, Exactly like we bring the dead land to life, we will bring also the old bodies before resurrection to alive again. And Rasulullah told us in the before the day of judgment, Allah will send the rain. And all these bodies in the grave, Allah will brought them life again. So how can you wonder when you see the dead line, the dead land, bring to life by the blessed water? The one who can do this can bring your heart alive again. Can bring your souls to life again. Can bring everything to life again. Only Allah can do that. كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوج Bear in mind this كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوج Because in the end of the surah he said ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوج In the end of the surah he said that's the day of resurrection. Here, how we bring you alive again. مُتْبَئَ كَذَان Okay. That how So then he said كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوج So Brother and sis, brother and sisters, the problem here is everything is around us. What's the problem then? Why the people they don't reflect upon it? The problem is we have to know that there is a problem nowadays, which is there is a conflict between science and the religion. That's why many people they don't reflect upon the universe. They said everything. Oh. That's because of scientific method. Is, it sci is scientific method against the religion? No. So why they make this conflict? Because these people, they have a certain image about religion. The religion of the church in dark ages in Europe, which when the Europe now, in the Renaissance and entitlement era, they want to now try to discover everything. The church said, no, this is haram. This is kufr. You can't discover the universe. You can't reflect upon the universe. Just take from the Bible everything. When the Galileo, he tried to discover something, they said, this one is kafir. We should kill him. When the Cooper Nicks also discover another thing, they said, no, that's not allowed. That's the religion that they know. The church in dark ages. The Bible which Allah Taala said that the people of the book, they change the Bible a lot. Because of that, they become a conflict between science and religion. They said, if the religion stop us from reflecting upon the universe and discover a lot of things, then we don't need religion. That's how they come up with this idea. 
But Islam is not a false religion. Islam is the true religion. Islam instead encourages you to reflect. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ أَفَلَا يَتَفَكَّرُونَ he said, if you don't reflect and contemplate upon universe, that's a sin. Look at the opposite now. So I encourage all the youth here to read the story about the conflict between church and science in European history. It's a very important story to understand many things nowadays. To understand why many of these scientists who discover something amazing and they don't believe in God. They don't see these amazing things around them. They don't see this universe. The problem is that image, which is the religion for them, is block them from science. So that's why they don't have this basira. When you know that story of the conflict, you will understand a lot. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Haya ala salah Haya ala salah Haya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah La ilaha illa Allah Salli wa 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 salli So again, the second angle is to look at the universe, to reflect upon the creation of Allah wa ta'ala. And what, what prevents people nowadays from that is that myth that science is conflict with religion. That's why it's very important to read the story of this in European history. It's very important also to know your history. That Muslims, they contribute a lot to the Islamic civilization. There's an initiative here by Salim al Husseini, doctor in Manchester University, called 1001 Inventions. You can Google it, you can go to the YouTube to see a video, just 11 minutes, to go explain this. In this initiative is to show the contributions of Muslim civilization to the modern world. And to show that Islam and science, they never, there, is never, there will never be conflict in the past between Islam and science. This is very important because some people now, they try to bring this evidence. If there is a, this creation is indicate for the creator, why all these scientists who discover all these things, they are atheists? That's why Allah said, Tabsira, Basira. They have Basar, they look, but they don't have basira because they have a preconcept about this. Very important to learn about this to know. I have a series for the youth in Al Furqan Mosque every Wednesday. It's about identity, Muslim identity series. We talk about Islamic history, Islamic civilization, and the revelation, and we have also a theme about science and revelation. Because this is very, very important. But we as Muslims, we should also remind us this ayah to reflect. When you go with your family to Lake District, 
reflect. That's, that's the place of reflection. Tell your children, tell them to contemplate upon this beautiful creation from Allah wa ta'ala. When you bring any food to the house, ask your children, look, look how Allah created the fruits, not just to eat it, to see it in a beautiful way. That's how the Muslim, with the, when he revive his heart, everything he will conflict, everything he will, he will always think about it. Then Allah said, Tabsiratan, Allah said after that, وَحْيَيْنَا بِهِ بَلْدَةً مَيْتًا كَذَلِكَ الْخُرُوجِ In the, Then he now shift to the third angle. The first one is the absolute knowledge. The second one is universe. The third one is look at the history. For those civilizations before you, when they deny and reject the message of Allah, where are they now? Then he mentioned eight civilizations. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودٍ وَعَادٌ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوطٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعٍ كُلٌّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلَ فَحَقَّ وَعِيدٍ Eight civilizations. Four of them in Arabia and four of them outside Arabia because the primary audience of this revelation is Arab. <coughs> so he mentioned for them four civilization in their area which is Ashab al-Ras and Thamud and Ad and Tubba. This four is in Arabia and he mentioned also four outside the Arabia. And when he mentioned this, and this is one of the main theme of the Qur'an, but here in Surah Qaf, he didn't mention any details about these nations or civilization. He just mentioned their names, and then he said, all of them reject the message, and Allah Taala punish all of them. This is a very quick picture. You can go to the details in other surahs. But we can find something here. The ayah before is talk about the blessed water come from the sky. Many of these nations Allah destroyed by what Allah gave us as a favor also. The water is blessed water. But when you reject the message of Allah, many of these nations Allah destroy them by water. Only by rain, majority of them. So that's also... They said the first one is Nuh, they destroyed by water. Ashab al-Ras, in the strongest opinion, is a people in Arabia, they put their messenger in a well, in a water. Then Allah destroyed them also. Then he take that water from them and they die. Water again. And then he said also, Fir'aun, Allah destroyed them by water also. Ashabu al-Aika, they saw a rain, they thought this is maybe rain, and then again, the same thing also. Ad, Allah said in Surah Al-Ahqaf, when they say a lot of clouds, they say, Aridun mumtiruna. We are certain it's raining for us, but it was punishment. So this ayah here told us that look at that blessed water, for you, O oh human being. But when you reject, Allah can flip it down also. And that's a lot of examples in our nation. Point number two. All these civilizations, they reach a high level in civilization. They build a very nice buildings. So it doesn't matter about if you build a very nice buildings and all of this, and then you reject the creator you lost everything. Because imagine you live in this dunya just for a short time and you live for akhirah forever. So you focus on that very short time and you deny your eternal fate. That's a big loss. That's why Allah Taala He talked not to, our, to us as Muslims, to all human beings, open your eyes. 
if you thought that we have a strong civilization, how many civilizations before you Allah destroyed? Because, oh human, you are here for a purpose. Message from Allah wa ta'ala. If you reject it, then you lost your, your purpose here. So that while he end this, Kullun, all of them, كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلَ Reject the messengers. فَحَقَّ وعيد. And my punishment, Allah said, is always there. But majority of these nations before, Allah destroyed them, all of them. But when Allah sent revelation, He will not destroy the whole nation one time. In Quran, Allah mentioned the first revelation is come with Ibrahim. Suhufi Ibrahim. Then after that, Allah didn't destroy the whole nation one time. Because the revelation is evidence against them. So, when Allah destroyed Fir'aun, not the whole nation there. There's some people from Fir'aun, they became Muslim. And Banu Israel is also safe. The point here is, even if the punishment, physical punishment didn't come, but the revelation is evidence and enough evidence just to believe in Allah. May Allah open our eyes to reflect always upon the universe, upon the creation of Allah. May Allah give us ability to always appreciate and be grateful to the favor of Allah. Teach your children to be grateful. That's one of the big gifts that you can give to your children. So we are in the third angle that Allah talked about the previous civilizations. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودٍ وَعَادٌ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوطٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعْ Eight civilizations. Start with قوم نوح and end with قوم تُبَّعْ But here we realize that he didn't say قوم it means the nation of every one of them. He said, كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحِ Then he said, وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسْ In Thamud, وَعَاد وَفِرْعَون Without any title. And then, وَإِخْوَانُ لُوط And then, وَأَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعْ So, Mufassini discussed why of this. There's, there's just few opinions of this. I think Wallahu alam, the, 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 the point here is when he see qawm, in many in all the Quran he always say qawm. But here say three nations with no title, Thamud, Ad, and Fir'aun. Because they are very, very famous. Then he said two nations, he said Ashab, Ashab al Ras, Ashab al Aika. Al Ras is the well. Those people with the well and those people with Aika, which is, means garden with a lot of trees. Why these two specific nations? He say, Ashabul Aika, Ashab. It means those who have the well for a long time, those who live in a garden with a lot of trees for a long time. Because just previously he talked about when he sent the blessed water, there is a Jannah, there is gardens, and there is water. Those people who live with water and gardens in dunya, because they don't reflect upon this, this become their punishment. So that's why he ashabu ras ashabu al-aika. When he come to Lut, he said, wa ikhwanu Lut. In the whole Quran he say, wa qawmu Lut. He said he was Ikhwan Ulut. Ikhwan is just for the males, not females. So it's for the males, because Lut, as we know, they Allah Taala punish them because their great sin, because about that's what they did between the males only. So he said wa Ikhwan Ulutin. Then in the end, he start with Qawm Nuh which is the first nation, and end with Qawm Tubba, which is the last nation that Arab know. Just Tubba is a king in Yemen. Recently, this is the last one in, in history 
Nuh is number one and Tubba is the last one. Also when he says Qawmu Tubba, Tubba is a title for any king who governed the Yemen, called Tubba in the past. So you say Qawmu Tubba, it means that king deviated his uh, nation from the path of Allah Taala. So the king and the nations, they will get punished. So don't look for excuse in the day of judgment that you said, it's not my fault, it's the fault of my leaders, it's the fault of my king, it's the fault of my... That's why Allah Taala talk a lot in Quran about the debate in the hellfire between the leaders and the followers. Between Al-Atba' wal Matbu'een, between Al-Ladheen Astakbaru wal Ladheen Astudhifu. Those who always the masses, those who are always the alien in the in the any society and those whose followers. So sometimes followers thought it's not my fault. I'm just follow them. In the day of judgment, Allah will call everyone individually. And they will say that's not an excuse. This very important theme in Quran. Sometimes nowadays, some youth, when they say, hey, why you don't pray? You say, oh, you say we live in very difficult time. I always, this internet is so bad. That's not an excuse in the day of judgment. Don't think that's excuse. Oh, so, so you always said it's because internet, because bad company, because of the corruption of the country, because of all this list is not an excuse in the day of judgment. When Adam ate from that tree, Allah said, فَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ Adam committed sin. And shaitan committed sin also. The, pro, the difference between two sins, that Adam straight away say, it's my fault. But shaitan, he become arrogant. Look, when Adam repent to Allah, he said, he and Hawa, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا we wrong ourselves. In another word, it's our fault. Why he didn't say it's the fault of shaitan? Allah himself said, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ فَأَزَلْ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaitan is the one who whispered to Adam. That's right. But that's not an excuse. Because Allah to give us also power to say no to shaitan. Either shaitan from jinn or shaitan from a human being. We have that ability to say no. So Adam said, it's my fault, that's why Allah forgive him. Nowadays also, some Muslims, when they want to analyze what's happened to the Muslims also, they always said, it's the fault of our enemies. And they forget that we as a Muslims, we have a lot of problems. A lot of problems in our societies. So always solve the problem inside. And then look at outside. Inside is very important. When Surah to Ali Imran, the companions fall in Uhud, they said, why this happened to us? Allah said, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِهُمْ It means, number one, focus on what did you do with your Lord? What did you do in the fault? Our sins first. Our community. We should, first of all, to contain our brotherhood. We should solve the problems of our hearts. Definitely, outside is the problem. There's no doubt. Since the Adam and Iblis came to this earth, external problem always there. But when you focus only on external, you'll forget to fix the eternal. You think you are victim only, you are a perfect person, but the problem only is from external factors. So that's why when he mentioned all of this, he said, كُلٌّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلَ فَحَقَّ وَعِيدٌ Then he said, أَفَعَيْنَا بِالْخَلْقِ الْأَوَّلِ بَلْ هُمْ فِي لَبْسٍ مِّنْ خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٌ أَفَعَيْنَا literally, it means do we became tired? It means Allah said, if he created you in the first time, is it difficult for him to bring you back to life? You want to say, do we get tired in the first? Absolutely no. So what's the difficulty in that then? بَلْ هُمْ فِي لَبْسٍ Labs, it means confusion. Labs, it means confusion. 
So Allah said in Quran, Yalbasu and Yalbisu. Yalbas is to wear clothes. Yalbas. But Yalbis, it means to become confusion, to, to mix something with something. They are confusing. They, they doubt about the second resurrection, the second creation. Then he said, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ Now he come back to the first angle which is absolute knowledge. But in the first time he, talk that he said that he knows everything. When you become in your grave, Allah knows everything. But now he said even when you are alive, Allah knows everything, even when your soul whisper, Allah knows everything. Every thought, every movement, every statement you say, you always under the control. And there is two angels, their job is just to watch you, to observe you, to write down every single thing. The one who knows this, difficult to him to bring you back to life. So that's the point here. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ خَلَقْنَا We are the Creator. When he talk about the absolute power, he used the pronoun we, the royal we. خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ Created insan. وَنَعْلَمُ And we certainly know مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ Waswasa is when the whisper when you thought, think about anything, Allah knows everything. So we are more closer to him. And some scholars say we here is refer to the ilm of Allah and refer to angels that Allah put to observe you and watch everything. They are closer to you than the, the Jungle of vein. It means everything, even when your blood and sacred blood go there, Allah Taala knows everything, and the angels closer to you than this, than your blood. So be careful if you think about something bad. If you, but out of the mercy of Allah, when He mentioned the angels and how they record everything, He said, "Ma yalfilu." It means when he opened his mouth, the human being, to say something, straight away they record it. Why he say mayalfil? In another way, it means when you thought about something, but you don't act upon your thought, Allah will forgive it for you. They will not write it down. Unless you say it or you act upon it. Otherwise, that out of his mercy, he will forgive us. So he said, أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ From this ayah till the whole of this page, Allah Taala will take us in a journey that from when we are in this life, every statement we say, every movement we do, every thought we think about is written, and then he take us to the when we die, and سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ and when we come to the resurrection, and in that time, the Qareen, we have two Qareens, and the strongest opinion that two Qareens in Surah Qaf are different, not the same Qareen. That's why he put وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ and then قَالَ قَرِينُهُ. That's wow, very important. The first Qareen is an angel Qareen. And the second Qareen is Shaytan. Because we have angels with us, and we have also Shaytan with us whisper. Shaitan whisper, and if we go with Shaitan, the angels will write it down. So in the day of judgment, both will come. The angel will come, هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ This is the record. I recorded everything. And the Shaitan, the second Qari will say, رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ It's not my fault. It's his fault or it's her fault. So we take us with a journey here, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ But very powerful journey. That's why I always said, if for the all young people, the best thing you can do is to learn Arabic. Believe me, all the translations will not give you the sense 
that the power, if you know Arabic language, and you pray with these powerful words, you will not get that full sense till you learn Arabic fully. It's a message for every parent. If you want to give the best gift to your children, teach them Arabic. Believe me, you will never regret. You will be in your graves, and your children, you give them the best gift. Open the door to understanding Quran, to understand Quran. So every time they reflect upon, they will make dua for you. So either learn Arabic or teach your children Arabic. Then you'll see these powerful words. And after that he said, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ So next time we'll go with this journey, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ It will be a more time, inshallah. This time just very short time. Next time, inshallah, we have 45 minutes with no break, inshallah ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ May Allah guide us to a straight path. May Allah ta'ala open our hearts to the Qur'an. May Allah ta'ala relieve the pain of our brothers and sisters around the world. May Allah give them strength and power and patience. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make last word in our life. La ilaha illallah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala abdi rasulis Sayyidina Muhammad.